Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. So today you currently join me here in the sim racing room, but I'm here to discuss my race from a couple weeks ago at Cal Speed Karting. Now this was the first race I had in over, I think, three months, um, obviously due to the current situation. Don't really need an explanation there. But it was one of my best race ever, if not my best race ever. I don't know. But uh, I qualified decent, and then in the heat races, they didn't exactly go to plan. So I started 17th in the C main, and I made my way to 5th at the end. But I wanted to show you kind of my analysis of my race and what happened, because I think to this date, it is my best drive ever. All right, so right here we are lining up on the grid. Um, and so at the moment, we are just getting ready here. Uh, obviously focusing on the flagger. Want to make sure we get a good start because the previous two heats, I did not get a good start. All right, and it is lights out and away we go. Uh, although, I guess green flag and away we go. So right here, off to a good start again. Um, I'm squeezed, but I'm squeezed on the outside, which means I'm on the inside for turns two and three. So I can nicely get past some people here. Um, coming up here, it gets quite chaotic. As you can see, if we pause for a second, uh, these three guys are just tangling, and I am much faster than them, but I can't get behind them because I'll get hit by that. I'll get hit by this group over here, and if I go uh, to the inside, obviously you don't want to go to the inside in number thirty-six because I'll hit the curb. That'll end bad. So what's crazy is we end up going four wide through this turn. I've never done that before, but yeah, that is, yeah, four wide. Um, I was on the inside, so I had the fastest line, so that was pretty simple. Uh, I'm now making my way up again. Uh, I got very good pace, but this guy's good defensively. He is not letting me get by. I had to lift there, so he's starting to pull away a bit, but luckily, tight hairpin. Not going to send it because there's no opportunity. And then this guy, very inconvenient what he does. So he sticks to the inside here, which pushes me around the outside. For those who haven't driven at this track, if you're on the outside of this turn, it's not that you know you need to hit the apex, but one, there's less grip, and two, you're going a longer distance, and these tires have plenty of grip to go on the inside. So he just kind of pulls away, and then this guy is right next to me, uh, and simply he just got to capitalize on me being on the outside. So he gets by, nothing I can really do there, but I'm just you know, trying to figure out when do I overtake him. But I know I need to keep my distance on him, and I just can't let him get by. Because if I let him get by, I'm going to lose the front, guys, for sure. So at this moment, I'm just continuing to push, but being very aware and cautious because it's only lap two, and this is, I believe, an 11 lap race, if I'm correct. So I am, at this moment, just, I got to go for a good opportunity. And right here, sort of worked, and then he kind of spun himself out. It was actually one of the weirdest crashes I've ever seen. So, you might remember, uh, my video framing is not very good on this. Sorry about that. But this 29, he jumps the curb, uh, which clearly unsettles the cart. And then he pushes this guy into the wall, so he spins out. But I want you to look at 47, because he had potentially the world's weirdest crash. So I'm starting, I'm going through, and I'm oversteering, but I'm able to catch it. But this guy, 47, he's clearly, you know, as they always say in karting, vision is key. Um, and so clearly he was looking, doing the tactic where you look at the cart directly in front of you. And that's good for following a fast person. But the second they make a mistake, you're going to make the exact same mistake. You have to look through them. And he clearly doesn't do that because he spins himself out. Look at that. Zero contact, and he's in the wall. Boom. So yellow flags are out uh, only in that part. I don't know if there's official sectors. Let's call it sector two. Uh, it's the Monaco hairpin. So we're currently on lap three, and I'm kind of far from the front guys, but again, with those incidents, you know, they just pull away slightly, 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 and the gap starts to get big. But I know, well, I don't know, but I have a feeling that the guy... In 29, well, he abused track limits there. But I think for sure he definitely was going to get a drive-through penalty. 
Uh, again, the front guys are just far away. However, I do get clean track, which means I can genuinely push, uh, which is a good thing. But then again, it's not qualifying. You know, you want to be, I guess, tight and because you're fighting for race position. So I'm kind of in one of those pickles where, like, it's good and bad. So my idea here is just find a way to cut the gap. And so, interesting, there his, there's his penalty. Um, kind of crashes into the tires there. But right behind me, number 58, he is very, very close. I, he's actually bump drafting me. He lifts her there. Uh, one of my good tricks here is just always outbreak him. It's, it's a very simple old trick, but it always works. So, again, these guys are catching me simply because they, you know, they haven't had any chances to be slowed down. But all of a sudden, I'm starting to pull away. But it's not a comfortable gap. And that's the important thing you'll notice is even though you could say I had podium pace in theory, I wasn't exactly pulling away from the entire field. And it was one of those things where every lap or every corner, the situation could be completely different. Bumps me there. But now he's very close to me. Uh, so again, I'm just being defensive, but obviously you don't want to get a penalty for blocking. Um, and so right here, I am just trying to think about what are my best moves. And I'm not hugging the inside or anything, but he finds a way to get by me. So we're wheel to wheel down the front straight. This is lap four, I believe. Um, and he's on the inside. Nothing I can do there. So I'm just like, fine, pass me. You know, because if I try to battle in there, it's there's no reason to. I'll find a better opportunity. And if you look in the bigger picture, we've caught the front guys. So, yes, I may have lost one position, but if you count seconds of the group in front, losing that position didn't really do anything at all. Because uh, now we're actually getting to the field. So, in my head, as I was racing there, I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, it's, it's fine. So, the hairpin is usually where you see carts start to spread apart or closen up. And I don't get the best exit. I still can't figure out that turn. Um, it's a very tricky one. But the thing is, you know, there's a big straightaway, and I got a really good exit here. And so, again, I'm just kind of further back, and I would say I'm relaxing, but I notice I'm starting to fall off. So I just got to, you know, find it in me. What can I do different? So one thing I try is slightly lifting through turns two and three, a double apex turn back there. And the reason I did that was just simply try to get less understeer. I think he got me half a tenth. If that, I don't even know if it was effective, to be honest. But at the moment, I am just trying to figure out where can I, you know, close the gap. Because it's starting to get in my head, you know, if I had such strong pace... Why aren't I catching these guys? All right, so you join me here on lap seven, and I haven't officially caught them. I'm still the back guy, but I am within a second for sure. And so at the moment, I am just trying to find a battle, and all of a sudden, he just spins out. And luckily, on this turn, you're allowed to go four wheels off. Uh, obviously, in emergency situations, you don't want to crash, so you can do it a, a maneuver. But luckily, I was able to get around him, but he kind of spun out of nowhere, so that was a bit interesting let's say um obviously that's why you want to be careful because if you're not constantly looking out for hazards like that you can spin as well so it's lap seven right now out of 11 laps so we're not towards the end of the race but we're getting there and so i know this is where i really have to push because often people in karting they push in the beginning and then they kind of relax towards the end uh which is fine if you have a decent gap but I would say no one here has a decent cap. So I'm catching up, catching up, but nowhere for me to go here. Uh, you can't really overtake into this first sector anywhere. So you really have to get a good exit. Blocks me there. Uh, if we rewind there, you can see what he did was, if you look at our front tire, or if you look at my front tire and his rear, basically, I have to give him the inside there, uh, which I did. But I had to suddenly slam the brakes, and then from there, I was kind of slow coming out. Look, he didn't get a very good exit, so I didn't lose any time there. I mean, I technically did, but so did he. One of those situations. Much better exit, though. Down the inside we go. Pretty simple overtake. He tries to fight back here, 
but it doesn't really work. So at this point, uh, I just in my head, you know, think Enzo's Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari's famous quote, what's behind you doesn't matter. So focus on the front guys because that's where we need to push and focus at and just see what we can happen. So at the moment, we are in 7th, uh, which I'm quite happy with, starting 17th and ending up in 7th. That's pretty good. So again, we're pushing here, and some contact in the front there, or not far front. It's kind of split off into two groups. So I'm just like, you know, let them duel it out, and then I'll kind of do a uh, Rubens Barrichello on Ralph and Michael Schumacher, where I just, you know, swoop in and take the positions. So they're battling it out, and all of a sudden I'm catching up, catching up. So the plan's working, that's for sure. Now I'm just coming in here and just trying to hit every braking point perfectly, get on the gas as early as possible, turn in everything, hit every apex, turn in everything, not really a saying, turn in perfectly. And so I feel like, you know, something could happen here in the Monaco turn. Nothing does, so uh, I guess a relief or a surprise, I don't know, but I'm catching them, and I just know, just got to stay cool, because the move is coming, and so, as we're going, I'm starting to catch up, but I think they got better exits, um, of course, the footage ends right there, let's move on to the next clip, so it turns out, uh, one of the carts, number 38, that's this guy, in the blue suit, he had a drive through penalty, I believe. Um, that's what the board was displaying. So, at least I know I can get a position here. But, again, we're so close. Again, I have to lift there. It's just, it pains me because this guy in the front, I mean, look how far ahead he is. That's easily seven seconds. And, you know, you just, it pains you when you get blocked because you know you can get past. But, you know, you obviously you don't want to bump draft or anything. Because that doesn't really benefit you either. So coming down the back straight, just, you know, obviously too far back to make a move of any kind. And once again, I'm close on, and I have to lift again. It it pains me watching this because all of a sudden, look at the gap now. It, they just pull away. and But then again, I'm thinking, if they're constantly gaining then losing, one mistake and I'm good. Now, what's interesting is he puts up his hands because um, he wants to let people know I'm slowing down for a drive through I think you're technically supposed to do the right hand because the penalty box is on the right. But what's interesting is he, he takes the normal racing line. So we kind of get blocked. And so if you look there, again, we lose more speed. Now I'm starting to catch this guy. And again, I just put my hand up because I'm like, oh, what can I do? He didn't block me. What happened was because that guy with the drive through blocked him, he didn't have as much speed as me. Now, this guy just tries to totally Daniel Ricardo send it. Uh, it didn't exactly work. Um, again, too much speed. Yeah, that's never going to work. Um, sorry. So I believe we're lap 10, 9. I'm not counting. Once again, I just saw the shadow. He's desperately trying to make a move on me, but kind of overtaking in the wrong spots. Uh, you don't want to overtake in the beginning of a straightaway because it will get you right at the braking zone. So at this point... I don't really know. I mean, I kind of feel like, all right, I'm stuck in fifth. Um, so I'm just like, let's just get this position, get the cart back in, and take fifth place. Because considering we started in 17th, I'll be happy with that. So again, coming down the straightaway, there's the white flag. Oh, that's the checkered flag. Uh, I guess they didn't do a white flag. So did a little pose there for the camera. But yeah, that is P17 to P5. I am... Yeah, that was a very good drive, I have to say. Could I have been P4? Who knows? All right, so there you go. 17th to 5th. I mean, I don't even know how to put it. I mean, in theory, had I not been blocked by the one guy getting the drive through, I could have been in 4th. And had the race been longer, who knows? So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.